So hi everyone. Um, my name is Fruity Snacks. I am the director and curator of the Eorzean Aquarium and the Eorzean Museum Network. And I have wanted to make a planetarium for a very long time. Uh, this is a build that I have wanted to do for a while, and I haven't made it because I've wanted some very specific things that we'll we'll get into. A lot of people, I mentioned this on Twitter, and a lot of people said that they wanted to know how I go about designing one of these venues from the ground up. So I thought that I would actually do that. I would show you my thought process. And I don't know if this format is going to work perfectly, but uh, it's going to be a learning process. And so let me know if this works or not. So for those who don't know what a planetarium is, a planetarium in a nutshell, is basically a large dome. And at the middle of the dome is a projector. We'll pretend that's a projector. And people sit on the outside under the dome. And the projector will project stars and the representation, an accurate representation of the night sky onto the dome. And there will be narration and it'll move around and take you different places. And it's really cool. It's basically like traveling through space. So that's what a planetarium is. And that's something that I have been trying to replicate. I really wanted to be able to have a place where we could talk about the space and the celestial bodies of, uh, of Eorzea and Final Fantasy XIV, especially after Endwalker. And so I wanted to make this planetarium. And whenever I get started with a major venue, one of the first things that I ask myself is what exactly do I want to do? And what is going to be the main defining feature of this venue? And for the planetarium, it was going to be shows that were repeatable. I wanted something that I could say like on a Friday night, be like, I'm going to do two shows Friday night and then do it again two weeks later and you would be getting the exact same show. And on top of that, because we're so limited on uh, housing space, like we only have up to 400 slots in a large, only 200 for a small, uh, it needed to be space efficient. So these were the three major uh like design pillars of this planetarium build is it had to be able to do planetarium shows it had to be repeatable and easily created and it needed to be space efficient so anyways this was the challenge that has been racking my brain for months and the first idea i had was taking a large house and in that main big hallway I drew up this idea of making little walls on the side of the big hall and then putting stars, star-like objects up at the top and then having people come in and we would be able to do shows up on the ceiling and then they would look upwards. That doesn't really work because a lot of housing items don't work from when you look at them like from the bottom up especially when it comes to space. So this idea or like initially was really not going to work. And I kept trying to figure it out. Like maybe we could add layers like using lofts or something. And we could have like basically be like a slideshow in a way, but we would gussy it up a little bit. And in the end, this just didn't work because it would have been too hard to repeat and it wasn't very space efficient. Um, we would have had to use the entire hall. There would have been like 30 things just to encase the planetarium. It didn't really work out very well. So we ended up not going with this. The next idea I had was um, taking it and turning it sideways. So basically it would be kind of like a movie screen. So the people would be over here and they would be looking at over here and the stars would quote unquote be projected onto the front of the screen. 
And there's an effect that a lot of housing people use to create starry skies where they take carbuncle lanterns. And we'll just pretend those are carbuncle lanterns. And they put them right behind like a thin partition that's black. And these lanterns have a particle effect that's sparkly. It's very starry. And so they'll they'll shine through. There's a bit of like a haze. It looks like a distant star. This would work. However, this requires floating. And so we couldn't easily put on a show. Like once we put up the constellation, like that was it. We couldn't easily move it in a time that would work for the show legitimately. So I thought, well, if they're tabletop items, why don't we put them onto shelves? And then those shelves would be attached to a stage partition that we could then just move away from that, that screen and just be able to preload stage panels with constellations or whatever celestial bodies we wanted to represent that would be poking through or either clipping through the screen. This ended up actually being, um, it worked until you left housing mode, because as soon as you put it down and then leave housing mode to lock it in, all of the shelves, which are wall mounted objects, would jump straight to the screen and be on the other side and they wouldn't be part of the stage panel anymore, which is not ideal. And you had to get them so close that close to be able to have the stars to actually clip through. So this was a good idea on paper, but because we needed to make it repeatable, we would also have to like take down all the shelves and it, it didn't really work out very well for the, uh, the repetitiveness because it would break every time we would use it. On top of that, stage panels uh, by nature are huge. So we had a massive space issue where it would take up a ton of space. Like the only place it could have maybe worked was in one of those uh, ground floor peripheral larges or in the basement where uh, like three quarters of it was cut off just to store the stage panels. So that ended up being a good idea. And we kind of got this idea of taking the stage panels as a way to program. I use that in air quotes um, as a way to program different slides. But in the end, it didn't really work out. The last idea we had came from when I was talking to a friend and he suggested, why don't we just change our perspective? What happens if the viewers were looking down onto wherever the performance was of of these of this planetarium show i'm like okay what we could do is place a bunch of like wool carpets or those wood mats dyed black to create a nice contrast and we could put uh, a panel of some sort in the back in the basement and place a loft really close to the ceiling with the lanterns on it or any other tabletop item. That way then they would sparkle through the floor to anybody who was up in the top. And that actually ended up being exactly what we needed to do. Uh, I should have up on the screen now one of the earliest like prototypes that I did I did a proof of concept in the Nature Museum, which is one of my small uh, little museum venues. And it doesn't look like much, but the fact that there's a little bit of a glow and a little bit of the sparkles on the ground proved that this type of method could work. And I'm like, all right, so how can we expand on this? Because right now we decided stage panels are kind of space inefficient. And to have one of these in the middle of the basement, it makes it really rough to move around. So what I ended up deciding do, to do is to make it more space efficient, I replaced the stage panel with a wooden beam. And that wooden beam would just be floating at, at a certain distance below the ceiling in the basement. We would then be able to attach lofts to that and those lofts would have the 
tabletop items that we would use to shine through onto the floor below to create the star effects. And so now you can freely move, if this is the floor, you can now freely move around however you need down here when you're running the show and you don't have anything getting in your way and you're not gonna accidentally grab something or click it or you'll have full visibility. And then I realized, you know, just one loft is a little small. And with the space that we have, we could actually fit four lofts in a grid pattern. So loft one, two, three, and four. And if we put wooden beams on like the certain sides here to kind of provide anchor points for them, we could have this huge quote unquote screen that we could use to build constellations. And this ended up being the idea that I'm going to end up going with. And in the next video or whatever, um, I'll talk about the construction of this and the iteration and the design of it. But we can take this now and build out pre-built constellations across these four lofts. And all we have to do is just click and place them onto beams to specifically say where they have to be. And then we'll be able to quickly and iterative, iteratively create these constellations for a show. We could easily repeat it because they're all pre-built. They're not gonna clip. These carbuncle lanterns don't clip through the floor. None of them are, none of them move. All you have to do is move the loft. So they're locked in once they're on the loft. So it's repeatable. It is space efficient because all we have to do is store four lofts and we can just stack those up like up on the wall. So if we have say three constellations, that's only 12 lofts, but we can put them all along the back wall and there's plenty of space to store four lofts just along the back wall without them clipping into each other and causing them to jump. And then uh, finally, it does let us do shows because now we have a stage. We could use this, uh, we can use the ground floor and design around that and turn it into a stage. And so our audience would be up in the balcony and they would be able to look down or we could set up bleachers in the wings that put them up a little bit higher so that they can look down depending on the capacity that we can accept. And we haven't figured that out yet. So hopefully in the next six months, we'll be able to actually host our first show. Um, but that was the whole, that's the whole iterative process that I took to get there. This is typically how I start coming up with ideas for venues is I think about what the main, uh, like tenants, what the main features are of the, of the venue that I want. And then I figure out how to make that and make it in a way that is scalable it is repeatable, it is space efficient, it fits within all the constraints, and it's something that everyone's going to be able to enjoy and use. Because if I don't enjoy it, no one else is going to be. That's kind of my belief. So that's it. That's kind of part one of the How to Build a Planetarium uh, documentation series. Let me know if you like this. Um, and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Fisher Fruity or at the Eorzean Museum Network Twitter, which will all be linked. And thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.